and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's episode we are going to continue the AWS Lex series and today we are going to fulfill an AWS Lex intent using Lambda. If you like watching more content like this, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> This is the third video of the AWS Lex series. So if you don't know what AWS Lex, Lex is a service to create conversational bots. If you want to start this series from the beginning, just go to this first video that I will link in the card somewhere on the top and you can get started from the beginning. This is the third part and in this part we are going to fulfill an intent using Lambda. In the first video we create our bot we can integrate it with Slack. In the second video, we validate the user input also using Lambda. And in this third video, we are going to uh, improve our Lambda that we did in the previous one to be able to fulfill an intent. If you don't remember what we were doing in the previous bot, we were having a bot that you were able to order coffee and there were some validations in the sizes of the coffee and the type of coffee you could order but now but basically whenever you type uh, yes i want to order this coffee then nothing was happening the never the order will never get ordered so what it means to fulfill an intent it means to make that order happen i don't have a bar but i imagine if i will have like an online order system what i will be doing I will be putting maybe this order to some database or in some stream so somebody else can pick it up. So that's what we are going to do in this video. We are going to modify our Lambda from the previous time to uh, grab the order and save it to a database. And then that database can be read by other applications that can let the barista know that there is an order in the queue to be processed. So that's what we are going to do. It's a very short video, it's very simple. But the first thing we need to do in order to get that started is to go through again our input from Lex. So whenever the user confirms an order or confirms an intent, then a message will be sent to Lambda. And that message will be the same message as whenever there is a validation going on. So let's analyze that. Basically, we will have the same structure in the JSON. It will be the current intent with the name and the slots. And by here, all the slots that are required should be fulfilled already. And then the change in the difference between the previous one that was every time the user types something and now, it will be in the invocation source. In the invocation source, before we were using dialog code hook, and now we will be using fulfillment code hook. Fulfillment code hook will be sent whenever an order or a new intent will get need to get fulfilled. The rest will stay the same. In our case, the response we want to send back to less is a closed response. In the previous video, we analyzed the elicit slot and the delegate, and now we will do a close. Close informs Lex not to expect a response from the user. For example, your order has been placed. That's good. And you can give an order number so the user can pick it up. So that's what we are going to do. The close uh, action, it has the same, it has a type, it has the fulfillment status. If it's fulfilled or it failed, there was some error. It has a message that you can show to the user. So it can be like, thank you, your order was placed. And then it has a response card that we will check how to use that later in our series that we will have a only video in response cards and cards in general. So for now, we are just replying with the first part of the message. So let's go to the code and see how it's done. And now in this part, we will do in four things. The first thing we are going to add the Lambda to the fulfillment in the legs. So then the bot knows that it needs to call this Lambda whenever the intent will be fulfilled. Then we are going to build this bot and publish it. And then we are going to add the basic code to the fulfillment in the Lambda and see how it works with the close response and then we will add the code for the database. So we are going to work in steps as always. So we go back to our boat of what we were creating in the previous video and the first thing we are going to go is to our latest version and we had created the Lambda initialization and validation and now we will go and create the fulfillment. In the fulfillment we just put AWS Lambda function and then we pick the Lambda that we were working in the previous exercise. So we are using exactly the same Lambda. You can have 
two different lambdas for this and that's totally fine but I don't see why not to have the same one and then you can write either a goodbye message after the the lambda was processed or you can have a follow-up message or you can have nothing and just return whatever the lambda returns the follow-up message is pretty nice if you want to hook up two intents together now we build we can test the bot to make sure that everything is fine i would like to order a coffee and then what kind of coffee and it will get an error whenever you want to fulfill that order and that's because we have not implemented any logic and there is no response for it so if we check the logs everything looks fine there is no error in the logs but as lex is asking for fulfillment and whenever it's not getting any response it's just failing so now we can go back to our code and we can go to whatever Whatever our dialog code hook was in the coffee order JS, we will create a fulfillment code hook. And there, what we will do is we we'll just uh, write a console log to know that we have called it. We are going to create a callback to our close response. And for that, we need to go to our Lex response file and add the close. So basically, close is just uh, sending the dialog action type close and then putting a state. In this case, we are going to use fulfill and then we are placing an order. Uh, remember that your message needs to be content type and then the order was placed. So now we can build and then you can test. Now you can try again in your bot. I want to order an Americano and yes, and then your order was placed and that's the message we send. But basically, this code is not doing anything. It's just preventing us from getting an error. So what we need to do is add some logic here. For doing that, we are going to create a new function that is called fulfill order, that grabs the coffee type and the coffee size and will save it in the database. So for that, doing that also, we are going to create a database manager that will be saving to our DynamoDB database and everything will be created from the serverless project, so from the serverless framework project that we are creating this lambda with. So if you don't know how to do this and you have never, you don't have any idea about DynamoDB and serverless framework and lambdas, go and click this card that I will link here around so you can um, check it out. So now uh, what, what we are doing in this small function is a lot of things. The first thing is we are going, to, is we are using uh, JavaScript promises because this is an asynchronous call to the database to save and then when, the, when we get the saved item from the database, we are going to create an order ID in order to save this item with an ID that can be found later. And then we are going to create another method that is to build the fulfillment result. As we did with the validation result, then we are going to use the fulfillment result. And that will be passing the, the order status if it's fulfilled, in this case it's fulfilled because everything went fine. And then we are passing a message, thank you for ordering, uh, this coffee and this is your order ID, your order is placed and you can pick it up from the bar. Let's create our database manager. So the first thing we are going to do is creating a file called database manager and we will put all this code. The code is available in GitHub so you can go and check it out. What this is doing is basically creating an item that we will store in the database, putting an unique ID to this order, putting the drink and the size in the item and then saving it in this uh, coffee order table that we have there and if everything goes fine it returns the whole item which has created and if not it returns an error and now we require that file so we call it and now we need to build the fulfillment result and that's super simple it's just uh, basically a return of an object that will return the fulfillment state and the message but I like to follow the same structure that we did with the fulfillment valid with the validation result. So that's what I'm doing it like this. The good thing is that this can be all reutilized later for, for other things. So you can refactor this code and, and remove the common logic. So after you have that, then uh, don't forget to install the dependencies in your package JSON, because if not, this will fail. So just do npm install UED save and then install the AWS SDK. These are all the libraries that are required by this database manager that you just created. So then they will appear in the package JSON and when you deploy the Lambda there won't be any errors. Because if you don't do this then when you deploy the Lambda there will be some weird errors. 
So just add all the different dependencies to your package.json. The next thing we are going to do and the last thing is to create the database in the serverless YAML. So this will create a database for us using CloudFormation and we'll just create a database called Coffee Orders Table. Uh, that's the name of our resource and we have one ID that is the order ID and the table in the AWS is called Coffee Order Table. And that's part of the serverless uh, framework YAML, YAML. And also you need to give permissions to for these lambdas to put things in that table. So we just need to give the permissions to that table. Now we need to basically call whatever we created and it should be working. So then we call that method that is the fulfill order with the coffee type and the coffee size. And then we do the callback with whatever we got in the response. And we deployed. So now we can try, I would like to order an Americano. And then what kind of, Amer we would like to order an Americano normal. Yes, your order has been placed and then you get the order ID that is for log, but well, you can make smaller orders ID if, if you want. And then you can go to DynamoDB, if I find it, and uh, DynamoDB and check that you have the table there. So you go to tables and then you see that you have the coffee order table and then you click and you go to items and then you see that there is one item and that item has an Americano normal that is what we just ordered and the ID as well and then we can try out oh, like I want a large latte yes and then your order is placed and then we can check the database got updated with that one large latte and you can create any parameters you want in the table. For example, if you are like the timestamp or you want to know if it's been like delivered to a customer or not. And then after you are sure that everything is right, you just publish your bot. And you publish in the same alias. So then it will be available from the Slack as we did it before. So it's ready in your Slack. If you haven't configured your bot in Slack, you can go and check this video that I link here for you and um, how to do it. And then we go to Slack and then we can try it again. I would like to order a double espresso because I'm tired. Yes, I want a double espresso. And then your order has been placed. You can pick it up from the bar. I would like to order a robot as we tried before and then what kind of coffee and then you say robot validation still working we don't have a robot do you want americano yes americano yes i would like to americano and your order is being placed and then you can go to database and you can verify that all these things has been put there so it's a very straightforward process and you can do anything you want in the AWS console. You can put this in a stream. You can put this in, I don't know, in a file. You can send it to another Lambda. I don't know. You can use your creativity to, to fulfill this order in the way that you think is best. So this was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or whatever you would like to see in legs, just leave it in the comment box below. I love answering your comments. And in the next video, we will be working with recognizing users, something that you will wondering already and asking in the comments. And I think you will be interested, so stay tuned. And if you want to see more of my channel around here, there is some videos that YouTube is recommending for you that you can go and check. I hope you have a great week and I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!